Yo 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 what's up guys this is Happy No with another Guild Wars 2 PvP video and this time hopefully the sound will be okay alright and yeah I don't know what to say hopefully the sound will be okay I said it twice and I'm gonna be starting with the core necromancer I had a pre-recorded video where I just shined so freaking much but I'm just too lazy to record my voice after that gameplay that I just decided to give you one ranked arena game and I'm just waiting a few minutes now and the queue hasn't popped up now it's late in the night it's like 10 or 11 I don't know and yeah I'm gonna give you some core necromancer because it is one of my favorites and during the last seasons and also in this season it is pretty solid to play it is free to play so everyone can play this and everyone can also make adjustments how they like it uh, yeah. I prefer to play this build on maps like Eternal Colosseum and Jin's Domi Dominion. Battle of Kylo can be played as well, but Battle of Kylo with the port spots and with the different ways to hide from uh, from you, it is not so good. So Eternal Colosseum and Jin, Eternal Colosseum is even better because you have those huge areas, so you can also attack the enemies from the distance and chase them around a little bit better. So let's see what do we have we have oh my goodness double necro double ranger and a mesmer So this is a little bit tricky because soulbeast can deal a lot of damage mesmer as well The core ranger I don't know what we probably condi I would say I don't even know We have a reaper Thief Guardian and what is the guardian playing dh okay dh and ranger this will be really interesting why is he not showing the DH sign here? Okay, double core necro. This is good. They will have uh, a lot of healing, so it's my goal to really interrupt them. To keep my team also alive by removing conditions from them. This guy is swapping. Good choice. You never see that, actually. So, what can I say about this season? I haven't played so much. I got even again DK. <laughs> I played 11 games. Uh, from 11 games I want seven I don't even know seven games won which means I have four losses uh, where three were at the beginning of the season the three first games which never really happened were awesome losses this guy got one shot yeah Reaper against uh, soul beast is pretty pretty dangerous the match starts soon uh, we have not so many we have like no point holders only this guy here the ranger but he has to be really good otherwise we will be struggling and this guy needs to play safe this umbra guy okay they have a thief as well now this will be interesting game actually. Hold on to your points. Seize theirs. this guy swapped he was dh and now he swapped i don't know what's happening oh my god I'm seeing this, we're getting stealthed up. <laughs> so, where do you want to have your flesh from? I just hide it here. It, this is a bad spot. Let's go for the soul beast. Force him to use You've something. He just wants to. Can I? Yes, I removed some conditions from this guy. Trying to interrupt him. Okay, my feet. You've lost the field. Trying to interrupt someone. Oh my god, he just really interrupted me. He runs into it again. That was a bad move from this guy. <laughs> he should die here. Oh no, he has the elite. What's the name of this skill? Double fearing this guy. No. We got the revive. Stop attacking. I can't stop my attack. Damn, it's so bad. I'm trying to immobilize. Gonna get this guy, gonna get this. Doing this. Nice. Look at this fear. Look at this fear. Easy revive. Getting this guy. Come on, come on, come on. Do we have a down here? Yeah, we have. We have double down actually. 
Oh shit, oh shit. No. Okay, we have the review on the Mesmer again. Hearing him. Help you. God damn it. Easy revive. Oh my god. <laughs> That's just what I was expecting. Like, this game will be nuts. Removing condies from my allies now. You've lost life. Shit, was I able to. I was not able to land my troop. I would have got him here. They need to. Uh, free, 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 free. They need to. The lend this guy because he's not so favorable. Transferring conditions. I'm in a bad situation here. Oh, oh this guy should be careful. Peer. On this? No. Nice, 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 nice. I wanted to interrupt him. So that's just perfect, man. You see this core necro just destroying. The Let's artifacts see. have reached Can you go maximum for the yes, power. Can. Checking out the enemy, interrupting this guy. He will dodge. He will stun break. I could have gone for a kill on this guy. Blue team has obtained an artifact. What is he playing? It's a condi plane. Okay. Come on. Catching this guy. Removing condies from my allies. No, I need to search for the next action. Interrupting. Running. Okay. It's just so difficult here to see anything. Okay. Shit, 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 shit. I can't see this guy. He will get the revive. We can get another kill of this guy. You've lost the field. No. We have no damage. I need to get away. We need to move on for a second. We need to get this Mesmer. He's too annoying. Wait for his... He's not... He's not... Uh, dodging, so that's fine. We got double kill. We got double kill both the revivers. Pretty awesome. I'm gonna go close. I should go far trying to revive this guy. Never mind. Okay, 1v1 against the Condi, so please don't go for this guy. You've captured the field! Should have not gone for this, but I just want to Blue team has obtained an try and get something. Okay, he has stability. Waiting for the stability to, to end. He just gone away. Nice one. No, I don't want it to activate it. Why is this guy not capping the no? Oh my god. Now my team should not overextend. We need to play two nodes. We, we got a really good game here actually going on. You've captured Lion. But now you see this. What I said, we are not able to hold nodes properly. So this will be really pl problematic. Trying to get another kill onto this guy. Come on. Immobilize. Lost the no, what is this? Don't activate the trap. He might die, he might die. God damn. You've captured nice. Dragon. We got in the sword buff, so that's perfect. The artifacts have reached maximum Triple. power. Corrupt him. Oh, I have no fear now to kick him out. Wait, wait, wait. Why is it the sword buff not triggering? We have the sword buff, uh, but this guy did no damage actually. Okay. So now, if my team holds those two nodes, you see the Blue team has obtained an artifact. Just wait for this You've nodes. lost Dragon. He will jump me. He will not jump me. So now I can hide. It's not so good that the thief is here. Go away. Team has yeah, obtained an artifact. To hide here my flesh room somewhere. Look at this hiding spot. <laughs> okay, forcing stun breaks. One stun break forced. 
is revealed. Okay, he's immobilized. Conditions back at him. Now I can go for a decap. What? Oh, he's. I can just auto attack here. No. That was a bad, bad, bad engage. Ends a little bit auto attacking. Okay, the thief got this. But the thief should have not stayed here. I need to stomp this guy because of safety reasons. And this is also not so good for me to stay here, but I wanted to just really get the cap, hold this guy uh, away from his allies. You captured Dragon. But my team is losing. Where is the range? You can't read them. You've lost Lion. Okay, probably. Or do we want to go for this guy? You've lost the field. Hearing him behind the corner. Interrupt. Nice. What a what a he needs to stomp. That's it. Now we can move on. I think this guy just applies some conditions because we can just transfer. The Coliseum's artifacts are accruing. Mobilizing power. him. God damn it. You've lost Dragon. Interrupt. He has nowhere to go, so he just gets interrupted. I need to wait a little bit. I could have gone for my leech, but that would have been too early. I need to watch my feet, and I need to be careful. But this guy is playing combi, so that's... What is, what is he going to do? He's going to stall a little bit and immobilize. The artifacts have reached maximum Getting a perfect power. execution. Okay, you lost the field. Attacking, please. Getting away. Transferring conditions. How long can I do this? Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh my god. Left hand barks me into the freaking pillar. That was such a bad thing. I exp I, my flesh wound is somewhere here. I expected it like at least to. Yes, interrupted that. Yes! <laughs> I love this thief. This thief seems not to be that bad. And let's fear this guy off. Interrupt him so he can't use any healing skills. Let's go. Tr Shit. I want to get this guy away. Cleansing my guy here. Getting out of the shroud again. Getting the detail. That's good. But my thief needs to move on, man. I don't know if, if it's so good to have my flesh wound here, but it's better in the middle of the map. And now I'm just gonna go far and try to hold it then. Oh Attack my flesh wound. Don't kill it, please. Oh my god, you are such a bastard. Go away. You've captured the field. Okay, I got the thief cap, that's what I wanted. Uh -oh. Can I hold two people here actually? That would be great. Holy fuck, I should be careful, man. You've lost Dragon! No! I just interrupted my healing spell now, so hiding here my flash one. Hiding him there. That was a, such a great and annoying You've captured Lion. doing this so if I get Connie bumped here somehow dodge. there's a trap here. is there another trap here? as it looks like not the Coliseum's artifacts are accruing power Is decap. Now it's just about holding this node. Hopefully, I can hold it. You've lost the field. God damn it! You 
Okay, need to mobilize. The artifacts have reached maximum power. Holy fuck, I'm gonna die. No shit! Oh my god, this fucking pet. I was not expecting this to happen. Let's go. Yes! Oh my god, fuck. <laughs> no, I'm not looking for it. But thief is also lower. God damn it. One more fear, one more fear. I have him. <laughs> I'm gonna die. The stupid pet deals so much damage. We can get a comeback, maybe. If he decaps mid. Oh my god, this fucking pet. I, I, will, I will have needed just to get out of You've my lich, but I dragon. wanted to have the lich 5 for the extra healing. Death here, please, if you can. Death it just, and I'm gonna do it. You've got to the field. Is he revived? You oh my god, I'm not reviving actually. Is this guy gonna get revived? Yes, this guy will be getting revived. Fuck. No, this game was so good, man. Let's see. We need to get this stupid master. I'm not getting the master. I'm not getting the master. I need to do this. Shit. Two as one. The thief could try to decap. And I could try now some really sneaky thing. No! Fuck. That would have been so amazing if I would have got this. Fuck. Oh my god. I hate this game. <laughs> that was so close. God damn it. Oh, I just lose 26 points. Okay. That, that was good. That was good, actually. Revives, offense, and damage. I didn't get the top stat kills, man. That's so rude. One really bad death because I was expecting a little bit too much from my freaking flash worm. Did I die? No, I, I didn't die there. I got revived. I died against the ranger. That was also really bad. Top stat damage. That's, I guess, okay. <laughs> core ranger. Uh, core ranger. Core necker should not get top stat damage, but yeah. I mean, overall, pretty solid game. I fucked up against the ranger. But I don't know if my team would have been able to win this. The enemies were just able to really get the entire time kills on our ranger. Uh, killing this... Oh my god. How many rewards do I get? Chest of lo loyalty. Loyalty. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Still. Awesome game. You saw the power of a freaking core build. Core necromancer, man. This is insane. Intense game. Now let's go ahead before I show you the build. Uh, a lot of people just ask me always about my wardrobe. So here we go. Bloodstone Visage, those red eyes. You get this from a Heart of Thorns uh, quest, mission, I don't know. Raven Mantle, Gem Store, Laystone Westments, uh, giving you those, I don't know, floating lining, floating shiny thing here. Looks also pretty awesome. Then we have... Um, also Heart of Thorns, I guess. Pyre Gloves, Gem Store, and War Beast Pants from ha Path of the Fire, actually, I guess. I don't know, yes. Then Tribal Walkers, just matches with a Necromancer. And then we have Mad Realm Scepter with Mad Re Realm uh, Warhorn. Just looks really dark and dangerous and, yeah, pretty cool. Then I have Mythic Staff skin, which you get, I don't know how you get this. Also from the gem store, if you buy those uh, sets for 2k gems, which is really expensive. But for this staff, it was worth it. I think it looks even better like most of the legendary staffs, man. This this looks so awesome. And it, ch it, ch it changes also the colors, uh, the lightning effects here. Pretty awesome. Then the backpack, Shrine Guardian backpack, which matches also pretty, pretty perfect with the, this, I don't know how to say, this outfit. Yeah, then let's go ahead with the build. Uh, this build relies on landing your fears, applying some conditions, transferring a lot of conditions, and helping your allies by, con uh, how to say it, transferring their conditions to yourself, like this. <laughs> 
So let's go ahead. I'm using Rune of the Lynx for the better movement speed if you are out of combat, otherwise you will not benefit so much from it. It also gives you some power and condition damage. The good thing is the condition damage increase is also pretty nice to have here on this one. Otherwise you can go with Nightmare, but this will just give you a lot more Condi damage, more Condi pressure, but the slow movement speed out of combat, which is not so great, especially since core necromancer has really low movement and if you want movement you have to waste spectral walk or flesh worm and that's not so beneficial because these are your lifesavers uh, i'm using on the scepter and warhorn sigil of doom sigil of doom gives you on your next attack when you swap to this weapon set an additional condition which is poisoned which decreases the enemy healing by 33 percent which is really strong and in combination with the step to three feast of corruption you will corrupt another boon which means uh, one boon corrupted into a condition that means one condition applied another one is torment and then poison so you will get immediately three different conditions on an enemy player and that's huge with one with one hit with one weapon swap that's pretty awesome then you have here uh, what else sigil of revocation on hit remove a boon every 10 seconds if you auto attack a lot of times you will also remove a boom from the enemy player every 10 seconds in combination with this you can also remove immediately another boom which means you will corrupt the boom remove one apply three different conditions decrease the enemy healing by 33 percent and that's just pretty perfect awesome combo in my opinion uh, not not much to say you can also maybe go with cripple or stuff or something else uh, but that's not so beneficial because you need to be close uh, on the enemy players if you go with that then on the staff as always sigil of escape with sigil of energy uh, more dodges more survivability then sigil of escape just if you get a, in a dangerous situation one swap to your staff you will get out it is mainly used uh, useful if you have immobilized on yourself so you can retreat again from that uh, Immobilize will not allow you to dodge, so this combination is re really great. Removing Immobilize, you are able to dodge, but it has a long cooldown, so you have to be also familiar with that. And then to the build, I'm going to explain everything in detail. Blood Magic, Soul, so Weeping, I, w I wanted to say Soul Gasping, <laughs> Curses, and yeah, let's go on with Blood Magic. You will have here lesser mark of blood. Every time you dodge, you will land... Uh, apply a mark which will be also unblockable due to your trait lines it will give you 3% life force regeneration and bleed on the enemy players that's pretty nice only in combat if I remember correctly yes then ritual of life when you start reviving you will cast a lesser well of blood which will give you healing over time and it will revive the downed ally by 1% uh, which means while you are reviving you will get an additional 1% revive speed which sounds not so much but still you will get 5% revive or even more uh, on the downed ally the best thing here is again uh, the healing when you are low you you are in a as you saw in the team fight it will be really nice because it will also heal your allies as well pretty strong skill when Pyrrhic, Siphon Health, whenever you hit a foe, minion, Siphon Health and transfer it to you. Just life stealing. When Pyrrhic presents your nearby ally, Siphon Health with attacks, this effect increases while in Shroud. Uh, it is, uh, um, how to say it, uh, when you, will, you and nearby allies will get this Vampiric Aura, which means you and your allies will steal health from the enemy players by dealing damage. Uh, this is like a boon which is not removable and also affects only while in combat. Last rites, as long as you are uh, not downed, allies near you do not bleed out if they are downed. Gain health based on your current health. I don't understand this so much, but you do not lose health while downed. Uh, what happens is either you or your downed allies, I don't really understand this, will not lose health. You know when you get downed and the enemies let you bleed out, you will not bleed out. They have to stomp you in this case. And that's pretty nice. Then Unholy Mature, the best one here, uh, which makes you a really good team fighter. Entering Shroud transfers conditions from allies to you, exiting Shroud consumes them. Which means five conditions in total are getting transferred to you. 
from all your nearby allies in a radius of 600 which is really strong and you can like just do this boom get the conditions get out again get your shroud uh, on cooldown and repeat this process after 10 seconds again pretty strong if you have a downed ally who gets just uh, condi bombed or your allies want to revive but all getting condi bombed you can just go into your shroud start reviving you will take um, less damage because of protection from physical damage and you just tank while reviving pretty strong pretty strong and in, ca uh, in combination of that if you have at least three conditions on you you will consume them and you will gain then nine percent life force and that's also pretty nice to have then soul reaping increase the amount of life force gained from all sources by 10 percent soul marks marks become unblockable and generate life force when triggered that's what i wanted to say with the marks pretty pretty strong uh, especially strong with reaper's mark unblockable fear pretty deadly pretty deadly and allowed you as you saw in this video uh, interrupting enemies from reviving their allies shroud skills can reduce recharge by 15 percent fear of death this is uh no not this one right this not fear of death this is i want to say optional but it is down here the optional trade line terror fear of death your fear effects have increased durations inflicting fear generates life force which means every five seconds once you fear an enemy you will get seven percent life force and the duration is increased by 50 percent which means one second fear will be one and a half and so on and so on then maximum life force is increased by 20 percent uh, that's also pretty nice to have you can see this here your life force is normally like a, how much would it be like a 20k or something or even less and then with the 20 percent you have more eternal life gain life force every interval up to the threshold when not in shroud gain protection when you enter shroud uh, you will get up to 20 percent life force uh, every second or how, how is it every second like three percent life force until you reach 20 percent and you can see it here uh, i already got again 5k life shroud or is it yeah life force life shroud just shroud by just chilling here you can see this here it increases the entire time until you hit those magical 20 percent and that's pretty great because uh, on some situations you just have to run away you have no staff abilities you are maybe here on this weapon set and you can do nothing and that's just pretty great then you can after 10 seconds go again into your shroud and be safe for a few seconds longer then curses your main damage trait lines here barb precision critical hits have a chance to cause bleeding increasing bleed duration this is not so it's just mad but bleeding duration is increased that's good bleeding deals some kind of damage and <laughs> not so much but still good enough then some important thing to note is plague sending your first attack after entering shroud transfers conditions this is important to understand because once you go to your shroud either life blasts dark path uh, tainted shackles or doom every one of those abilities will transfer the two conditions from you onto the enemy players now you might ask where do you get those conditions you get it from uh, unholy mature or just by fighting condi players that's it <laughs> really simple uh yeah if you can plaque sending works pretty nice with the dark path because you will apply an extra bleeding and then you have a port to the enemy which also allows you to cast your fifth ability to immobilize the enemy player if they probably just like leap away you have the two ability on them you can just port to them and then uh, with tainted shackles get the immobilize going on immobilize and torment furious demise gain fury when entering shroud gain additional precision this is not so great in our, on a condi build but it can trigger more bleeds by this yeah it's not really so effective uh, it can be effective when you are onto your lich form but yeah it, it works when you enter shroud which means you can do this get out lich and then you have fury and then you might crit and deal a little bit more damage but it is really hard to execute because you are a condi player you will not really try to make this combo happening but if you can do it then the optional trade line here fear you inflict deals damage each second this makes you really strong if you are able to land your fears but if you have enemies who have a lot of boons who uh, who can stun break and have a lot of stability or blocks like the enemy mesmer 
you can also go with shroud skill to now additionally converts boons into conditions this would make it even harder for the enemy players because you can have more corrupts and that's pretty strong against as i said comps who have a lot of boons this will work pretty nice you will lose the damage on your fears but therefore you will have your fears still working as just a fear to interrupt enemies from using any abilities they have to stun break so you can still force them and with this ability you are able to just convert stability into extra fears to just remove the stability and be able to fear them even more and stability will also just be converted into fear if you corrupt that target the weak increase critical hit chance for each condition on the foe which will again lead to this here furious demise and barbed precision more bleeding onto enemies uh, who have a lot of conditions but uh, yeah bleeding is just not such a strong condition 130 damage uh, for one second one and a fourth second uh, that's just meh then we have less and fable bleed and weaken nearby foes every 10 seconds cast less and fable when entering shroud this will trigger every 10 seconds if you go into your shroud but lesser and fable itself will trigger more often uh, da, 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 bleed and weaken nearby foes damage blah, 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 boons converted into conditions cannot critical hit I don't know if it's working together I don't know how it works actually I thought it will be in a combination cast lesser and fable when entering shroud critical hits inflict weakness I know on critical hit you can still apply weakness but when you go into a shroud you will apply uh, the lesser and fable which means convert one boon into condition and apply the additional damage bleeding and weakness that's what i wanted to say you can still apply weakness if you crit on enemy players and weakness is pretty strong against physical damage endurance and reach endurance regeneration and the enemies have a 50 percent fumble which means they will crit less and just miss their attacks like i don't know how to say it if they deal 1k damage with an auto attack they will deal 500 instead and that's huge okay let's go on with the skills auto attack try to land your auto attack against down players three times so you will have the six seconds poison decreasing the regeneration uh, the revive speed on downed allies gasping dead this is just important if you have an enemy who's trying to get away from you or from your allies cripple five seconds pretty annoying they are not able to run away feast of corruption as i said at the beginning when you weapon swap remove a uh, not remove but transfer one boon into a condition apply torment apply poison yes and also life force actually <laughs> so then whale of doom whale of doom <clears throat> whale of doom unblockable days which is pretty strong two seconds days which means enemies are during those two seconds not able to use anything Pretty strong if you interrupt healing skills uh, the healing skill will get on cooldown they have a two second day so they can do anything only dodging locust swarm for mobility and uh, in team fights you will also sift in some health from those uh, locust swarm or how, how is it it will deal some kind of low damage but still give you extra healing then on the staff auto attack deals not so much damage but use it just to poke enemy players mark of blood can be used freely and it's also really good if the enemies are stealth so you know if they dodge this mark they could be nearby and it has a low, low, low cooldown it is again also unblockable but just spam it because it has long cool, low cooldown it will give you life force and regeneration then uh, chill blades also short cooldown is there for chilling and poison it is also unblockable and it is pretty strong to just stop enemies from running away pretty good then putrid mark is in my opinion even the best after reaper's mark i will say yeah putrid mark will transfer three conditions onto the enemy players back and with the unblockable they have no chance to avoid this only like the mesmer if he goes invulnerable but otherwise you will just transfer the conditions back which is actually really really strong against any kind of condi player against the condi soul beasts against mesmers necros and so on and so on so that's also why i always waited to get some conditions so the enemies can spam me i don't have to dodge because i can just transfer them back then reaper's mark i see and i've done this mistake also many many times at the beginning of a fight just spamming this ability 
don't spam it only if you know you can hit the enemy player because it is really easy to dodge and most necros do that and most people just dodge it because they know they spammed reaper's mark it is pretty good opener because you can catch enemies and they most likely will just use a stun wave which is good but if you can also use it against uh, elite skills to interrupt enemies from reviving or interrupt healing skills keep in mind unblockable the healing skill consume conditions pretty strong especially as i said in a team fight you consume conditions go out maybe you have still two three then you can use consume conditions remove all your conditions and get huge healing from this skill spectral walk allows you to get uh, protection no nope, no protection they removed it uh, swiftness and then you have the spectral wa walk and then you can just port uh, back no matter where you are at which posi position you started you will get back and that's pretty pretty huge keep in mind the first usage is a stun break the second one is not a stun break so you can get caught there if an enemy is uh, camping there you are really low you should not port back you should just die where, where you are at that point then spectral ring has many many good utility uh, how to say it, usages you can use it to protect your downed ally for example here you can just revive enemies are not able to cross here they have to waste stability otherwise they will not path this even if, if they stun break they have to like get in immediately stun break and stay inside if they don't immediately stun break they will just fear it out they go again and they will be feared again out uh, this is also pretty strong because it will give you and nearby allies protection when you revive someone. Pretty strong. It can be also used to zone out enemy players from a node to get decaps. Pretty, pretty strong. Uh, offensively, you can just chain it with like a... How to say it? Let's see. An enemy is here. He's really low HP. How I did it against one of the zombies. He's here. I just boom fear, boom fear trying to reveal and uh, maybe immobilize and once he's immobilized i can doom get a triple fear onto the enemy players and that will be like a one and a half three is it three four and a half seconds of fear chains and that will be huge which will give you also this 1k damage per per second uh, almost 5k damage only by your fears and if you apply some conditions and your allies dealing also some damage pretty pretty strong and once uh, once again if an enemy is feared he can't do nothing he can just stun break or use stability nothing else he will just not be able to do anything else he just will run away from you and that's huge keep in mind try to make good usage of your range because you can see this here the range of your marks is huge you can fear enemies from a distance and the marks are also really large so make good usage out of this same goes for the doom 1200 range and three seconds fear even three seconds yeah three one and a half from the normal fear and one and a half seconds so that's three that's three and three means six seconds of fear and if an enemy has no freaking stun breaks he will be just dead six seconds of fear uh let's see la, 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 la. yeah which will be 6k damage with terror and then also your other conditions which will be at least like 8k with the lowest amount of conditions 8k damage unblockable and yeah most most players have like a 20k hp or even less and they will just die by that if you catch them then flesh worm this shitty thing how to say it i don't like it so much because you can just kill it uh it is a lifesaver but it, in my case if you have no proper line of sight you will just get bugged into wa walls as you saw I, I was bugged in the pillar and that's pretty bad which means uh how to say it for example you have the flesh room here and you don't count the distances here for example you think you will be past this but the range is not so high you will just be ported for example here instead of behind the, the wall and you have to really make good usage of the range you have to learn the ranges uh, the line of sight so you don't get as i as i was there <laughs> bucked into the wall then the lich is like a lifesaver has a lot of good utilities and just there to finish off enemy players to create yourself stability make good usage of the third which will fear the enemy players you can reuse it to port unblockable fear three seconds and then you can just auto attack 
if auto attacks not working because the enemy is having a vulnerability or a shield to block your attacks use the four uh, to summon uh, those little flesh worms and then the fifth one to increase your healing you it will give you life force uh, yeah Lich form gives you stability increased precision vitality some life force and just try to auto attack my mistake was that I uh, wanted to tank that stupid pet on my lich form and use the fifth ability because the fifth ability gives you more life force once you get out of your lich and then go to my death shroud tank the damage and kill that guy I could have easily won that but I just fucked up so hard yeah now that was it guys I hope you enjoyed this video if you have now any questions feel free to ask me in this in this video in under the comment sections actually or in game as you see, I received still some mails, even though I was inactive so long. Uh, I tried to answer within a week. Normally, I answered uh, during the 48 hours, something. But I'm not playing so much Guild Wars like once or twice a week. But I will take this time to record new videos and give you some new fun builds, as you saw on the Bunker DH. Now, as always, three of my other videos. And of course, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel if you don't already have done that. And I see you in my next videos, guys. Have a good day wherever you are. Bye-bye, all of you.